the end. Not this one, but that one. This new version of the end is filled with insane structures, terrifying creatures, and a bunch of crazy biomes. In today's video, we survive a hundred days worth of hardcore Minecraft, which is about 33 hours worth of footage. This video wasn't the easiest to record, so if you guys could smack that subscribe button, it'd honestly mean the world to me. Now, let's not waste any more time. Let's get started. Day 1 and here we are again. Honestly, it's a bit of a different environment that we're in. Believe it or not, but this is actually the end dimension. I decided to start myself off here since it is 100 days within the end. And so this is our starting point. This is our spawn point. Right off the bat, I started looking around for some resources and noticed that there are in fact chorus fruit, which meant there could be some end cities nearby. And I was kind of hoping on that, like really heavily. With the research of this mod pack that I've done prior, I know of no other way to get iron, so end cities are kind of our best bet to go. Same with diamond and any other research that's not usually obtainable within the end, or just don't have a special crafting recipe within this special version of the end. I start myself off with some pretty basic tools after obtaining some wood. This simply entails the wooden pickaxe and the wooden axe. Nothing too great, but it was a start. I'm hoping that most of you guys already know what chorus fruit is and does, but basically when you eat it, it does regenerate some hunger, with horrible saturation by the way, but it teleports you around. It's kinda helpful, kinda not, because it did in fact almost lead me to some deaths, which you guys will see later. I mean, who would want to see me in pain, right? Days 2-5. to five. Within this duration of time, I didn't actually find any other food source that I'm, you know, well aware of, so what I ended up doing is just farming a bunch of chorus fruit. That was the main primary source of our food for the time being until we find a better one, or even discover if there is a better one. And I honestly really thought I was stuck with chorus fruit throughout the entire series, so I decided to farm that as usual because I did not want food to be a problem. Listen, okay, while doing all of that, I also wanted to try my very best to avoid any Enderman sightings because if I look into their eyes, I'm dead. Straight up. That's how it works, okay? Trust me, trust me, evading Enderman is 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 just annoying okay guess what dumb little me decided to do look at the face of an enderman where was i i was stuck in my initial mine when trying to mine endstone in the very beginning i was just sat there as an enderman tries to rip and tear my face apart eventually you know after hitting it a bunch of times i did end up killing it so look at me you know actually surviving an enderman whoa day six to ten after doing a bit of crafting research i then find out that you can in fact farm chorus fruit as long as you get the chorus seed and that's exactly what i was aiming for it's usually at the tippy top of the chorus stems and that's where i got one from because we really didn't need that much if one could grow then we could just make so much more but honestly the saturation again was terrible so i needed a better food source after getting food out of the way i then find myself in a little bit of a biome that we spawned in except the one that we spawned by is kind of small and this one was a lot larger so i decided to enter it the first thing that I see is that there's a bunch of glow berries. The second thing that I see is that there's a bug. I don't know what it does. It could be poisonous. It could give me wither. I decided to poke at it. It didn't really do much, you know? It was just kind of vibing. Or so I thought. Nah, I'm playing. I'm playing. It, it didn't do anything. But here is where I found something very interesting and also something very crucial for later in the game. They're called blossom berries. And here's why they're important because not only do I get a blossom berry after breaking one of these, they also give me blossom berry seeds. You want to know why that's important? Because all of the time that we just spent getting all those chorus fruits was just wasted. Why do I even bother? Okay, whatever. We weren't going to let that get in our way anyways. So we decided to get not too many of these, just some of these, just in case we do end up finding a better food source beyond this. And I didn't want to make the same mistake with wasting a bunch of time collecting stuff that's easily replaceable. So I wasn't going to make that same mistake twice. Or so I thought. Did I mention I made a buttload of pickaxes? Because I knew I was going to go mining for a bit, but I didn't know how long. So I just decided to make a whole bunch. I guess, you know, always stay prepared, maybe? A lot of this time was also used up looking around. Because honestly, this mod was really cool. This biome in general had so much in it. And I really just wanted to explore. Seeing if I can find some maybe special berries that I can then farm. Something like that, something around those lines, and so I decided to look around a bunch. Spoiler alert, I didn't get anything new besides this very interesting looking wood. I wanted to get 64 of this because I knew that I was going to spend a lot of time exploring the different biomes in this, and so that's why I decided to stockpile on them. Days 11 to 15. Mindset wise, nothing really changed. After getting everything I needed, I then started charging through the biome. This biome actually lasted quite a while, it was not easy to traverse through, not at all. But eventually, we managed to find the way out. 
It's what we were introduced to after this biome, which is this nice, lovely shade of dark green within the end. Honestly, this place looked amazing. A bunch of glowing flowers, and it wasn't a huge jumbled mess of pink. In my personal opinion, I preferred this biome over the pink one. And obviously, as with any new resource within this, I decided to get a stack of wood from there too, because I knew that there were going to be multicolored wood, and I wanted each and every type. Shortly afterwards, I then got attacked by a bunch of the locals, which are these small little blue slime creatures. Now let me tell you, these guys are the most obnoxious things, because they fight like slimes, but they hit like they're ravengers. Okay, 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 so whose bright idea was this one? Come on now. I think the only upside to it all is the fact that they had the health of slime too, so they were easily killable. But if that thing smacked you more than two or three times, you're gone. While all that was going on, I also noticed that there were a bit of ruins that were next to this biome. I decided to go over there and take a look. I was actually really confused as to what I was looking at. It looked like some sort of a portal frame. I didn't know how to activate it, and it might have been something that's either for a future update or something later on in the game, and I was kind of excited to use it. I couldn't do much with it, so I just saved the coordinates and moved on. One of my favorite parts about this biome that we're currently going through are these little lakes with lily pads and lilacs in them. They're honestly one of the most prettiest things I've seen in this mod pack so far. Day 16 to 20, after furthering a little bit more of my exploration, I found a very nice in-between between two lakes. There was this little bit of land and I wanted to make a treehouse. I didn't want to really make one on land because there was always the fear that slimes could spawn in the house. I didn't really want that because slimes were terrifying, especially in this modded end, and so I decided to make a treehouse. Now hear me out, I didn't have any natural wood. That's also another reason as to why I'm getting stacks of wood, of each type really, so I can then pick the colors that I want for the perfect house in the modded end. Honestly, this came out really well, so if you want to see that, just watch till the end. I got straight to work, I had a lot of stuff in my inventory and I didn't really need to carry it around with me. It was a bit of a nuisance, especially when trying to find and collect a bunch of new stuff, so I didn't really want my inventory being clogged up. I placed the crafting table, used that crafting table to make myself a chest and stuffed a bunch of stuff in there. Luckily for us, we were still nearby the pink place and let me tell you why that's important. The seeds that we picked up for the main food source that we're going to be using for this series requires the pink dirt. Not the blue dirt, I tried the blue dirt, it didn't work. So we're going to need a bunch of the pink dirt. We also didn't have silk touch so we didn't have the enchantment that we needed to actually pick up this dirt so i just placed the farm over there and just you know call it a day i wasn't sure of how long this actually took if i could use bone meal for it i wasn't sure about any of this so i was just kind of yoloing it and obviously if i ever got desperate i got the pink biome right next to me so i could just go in there grab a bunch of berries and come right back out it's fine then we got attacked by a big slime in the pool which completely sucked by the way one or two more hits and i was basically gone I also ended up finding a bit of an ore. One of the only ores that I could find so far within the new end. What the ore dropped was this thing called an ender shard which is used for crafting recipes further on. I utilized the wood that I've already collected to make a bunch of blocks. Here's why. I decided to go out on an exploration journey. This mod pack was dedicated onto finding and exploring new biomes that are set for us within the end dimension. And that's exactly what I was going to do. I was going to get every resource that I possibly could, and also every type of wood. Because, again, at the end of the day, I do want to make a nice looking house in this dimension, and this is the only way to do so. Days 21 to 25, and so we began Bedwars bridging in the end. No, I don't god bridge, okay, so don't ask me in the comments. We made it to the other side, just to find another one of the lakes that we currently live in. We also f a bunch of jellyfish roaming around, and some fish in there as well. Throughout this experience, I also decided to collect a bunch of resources, because why the heck not? I needed them, the world had plenty of them, so might as well take it. After traversing this pretty elongated island, we then also discovered this thing that started glowing like it was some shiny crystals. I saw it in the distance and I couldn't hold back, I needed to check out what it was. So we bridged there, decided to mine a bit of it, and then found out that it actually gave us this thing called crystals, which was used to make a crystal set of armor. Yeah, it's the godlike armor on the thumbnail. Come on now, we had to get a bunch of this stuff, and that's exactly what I did. These biomes honestly really intrigued me, so I wanted to find more. I looked around for a bit and really didn't find much, but eventually, I looked at one of the sides of the islands and I noticed that there's this big, gigantic mushroom. And so what do you think that we did? I'll give you like half a second to guess. We bridged to it, duh, as soon as possible. I sprinted over there and found out that there were a bunch of fluorescent things over there. From the lights on the ground to the bottoms of the mushrooms. If I found one of those things IRL and like it looked like that, I probably would have got electrocuted or something. And obviously your boy got a stack of wood from here as well. But more importantly, we also found out that the things that the mushrooms are made out of 
are legitimate blocks, but they break like there's no tomorrow. They break just as fast as slime blocks, but was really good in terms of what we were doing, which was bridging, and we needed a lot of this. I also decided to pick up some of the lights. They were really pretty, and I wanted to use them for my base if I can figure out a way to. But besides that, there really wasn't much else on this biome that was different from the other ones. I went back to my base, put a bunch of the stuff in the chest because my inventory was once again getting cluttered, especially with the crystals and now the blue blocks. So I want to clear out a bunch of stuff and just have blocks that way I can go from one island to the next and explore the new biome. So that's exactly what I did. Days 26 to 35. We're jumping the gun a little here because exploration is primarily what I did during this duration of time. The time that I lost coming back, we also used up to get back to the original position we were at so then we can further explore in that direction. I had a good feeling we were going to find really good things in that direction and I was right. When I say that the mushroom biome did not end, I mean that the mushroom biome did not end. It just kept going on and on and on. But eventually, we found the next biome. The next biome was a little bit of a strange one. There were these strange spiral looking structures that pointed upwards and it looked a little bit like a wasteland. The atmosphere around this area was a lot darker. Despite all of that, once I got a little closer, I then came to the realization that the place is based off of the color orange. I saw some things that looked kind of like berries that were attached to the trees. Upon breaking it, I then realized that we couldn't pick up any of what we hit. Probably needed shears for that, so kind of a bummer. And going through this biome took just as long, so I'm not going to show all of that. But on the way out, I did in fact anger a couple Endermans. Not the brightest of my ideas, but I created a little bit of a shelter so I can off them pretty easily. Did I mention that I made the mistake of packing chorus fruit? That was kind of my bad. I didn't realize that I can just go back into the pink biome and get a bunch of berries. Although I should have. I really should have. After that, the biome really didn't end. It just kept continuing. But on the bright side, we did end up finding another one of these ruins. What I tried this time around was mining some of the materials there, such as what the portal frame is made out of and the little podiums on the sides. But nothing really worked, so I decided to move on. In the background of this all, I also discovered the next biome that we're going to be exploring. But that's honestly not the important part. It's the thing that we found in between the biome we're at right now, and the biome that we were trying to get to. We ended up finding one of the end ships. Yep, down by the ground. Not even floating. Straight off the bat, I noticed that the dragon head was still there, so I took it. It's mine now. Upon further inspecting the end ship that we were at, it appeared that it kind of crashed, which wasn't very optimal, and I looked for the elytra, and I couldn't find it. I'm not sure if it's hidden somewhere, or like, I'm supposed to look in a very specific location other than the normal one, but at the normal spot where it's supposed to be on an item frame, it was non-existent, so I was a little concerned. Despite the bit of an L we just took, the chests were entirely full, so I decided to loot them. We got a bunch of iron, we got some diamond stuff, not too much though, obviously still a win because again you can't get gold you can't get iron and neither can you get diamond in this dimension so these were really big blessings in terms of progress ain't no complaining from me days 36 to 45 we you know strolled a little bit and then noticed that we were actually greeted by a little something that i like to call the floating ice spikes now you might be asking what in the world are these things they are clusters of ice yeah literally just that and i mean there is snow in it and I guess you could say it's one of the methods on getting water if you don't have any around you. Not to mention it's the end version of getting snow. So it's somewhat useful, especially if you're trying to do a survival series on this. In specific to the 100 days of progression, I didn't really see much of it. But uh, I definitely went out of my way to, you know, check it out and see if it had anything in stored. Which in fact didn't really besides the thing I already mentioned. I explored some more of this orange biome and tried looking for some new mobs, but I couldn't see anything different in here. So I just kept moving in one direction in hopes that I'd find a different biome. After the long period of time it took to actually cross this biome, we then come up to the next one, which is a mushroom biome. Yeah, we got one of those. You thought the fungus biomes in the nether was actually cool? Wait till you see these. These are quite literally called jelly trees. What do they grow as leaves? Jelly, what else would they grow? Not only that, but these blocks act the same way that slime blocks do. So you're able to use them to clutch up, you're able to use them as, you know, a building fashion, and you're able to bounce on them like a trampoline. I honestly had a lot of fun with this biome. It was fun just exploring in general, finding the little fluorescent lights that's at the tippy top that's colored pink, and just looking around, honestly, it was really fun. So despite the time limit that we actually have, it kind of slipped my mind and I stuck around there for a while. Not very optimal, not very productive, I know, but, you know, I just, I just wanted to enjoy 
I do want to mention though, I did take the time out to get myself a bunch of these wooden blocks. As usual, with every single biome that I find, if it has trees, I'm gonna get the blocks from it. Because again, I want to make some fire houses here. I I'm in house, not, not houses. After a long session of exploration, we then eventually find the very edge of this lovely biome. It will be missed. It was honestly one of the most peaceful biomes I've ever seen. It was super nice and there was a bunch of really cool sites there. In all honesty, that has to be one of my favorite biomes. Days 46 to 55. To get to the next island or, you know, the next biome, I had to use an ender pearl to actually get there. I threw it over, it was pretty nice and easy, and we were at a little bit of what I like to call the volcanic area. Or the area that's most likely to erupt if anything goes wrong. I didn't want to die like the dinosaurs did, so I kept my caution. After looking a little closer as to what the steam's actually coming out of, I then find out that it's a bit of a lake or a puddle i don't know what to call these things honestly they might be called geysers i'm not sure are these geysers can you guys let me know in the comments because i have no idea we did however find its very own species of fish which was a food source this was good for us not to mention there were also jellyfish as usual they kind of poison you they're kind of mean so i ignored them i then went to the very tippy top and decided to take a look as to where the smoke was coming from in general i couldn't actually get down it I thought it was one of those things in the new update where, you know, if you hold shift, you go down. But that's just not the case. It's a one way up and I didn't want to bother going inside of it because there was like a 50-50% chance that I would have died. At least I thought that was the case. Moving on from that, we then also approach another one of these orange biomes. Right after, we then discover a little bit of what I like to call the gigantic lake. Yeah, no, it's, it's literally a gigantic lake in the middle of nowhere. It takes up most of the island and... As the name literally entails, it is one gigantic lake with a bunch of lily pads, lilacs, and a bunch of wildlife, including the slime species. Did I mention that I really hate these slimes that are in the end? I spent probably a good hour trying to defend myself from all of these mobs. It's super annoying, but honestly, it was a really nice sight to see regardless, and I'm just happy that I found the biome. Moving on to the next biome. Bear in mind that in between looking for these biomes, there's a bunch of repetitions of the biomes I've already seen. I'm obviously not going to mention that because then it'd be just repetitive for you guys to look at. So we're just going to fast forward to the time we actually find a new biome. Days 56 to 60. This is where things take a little bit of a turn. So far, besides obviously the biome with the geysers, but you know, it still had wildlife in it. Everything was very happy. Everything was very fluorescent it was very glowy as is how i'd like to describe it at least and it didn't really contain much of a threat besides slimes and jellyfish up until now this has to be hands down one of the most creepiest and one of the most dangerous biomes in this entire mod pack i know i don't know what this is called but all i can say is running through this place you start seeing figures slowly walk up to you and if they get you i didn't even know what happened like if they actually hurt you i didn't know what would happen i was thinking in my head they might wither me and if i get withered i'm gone i'm using chorus fruit mind you so if i get withered i'm actually gone i would have to start back from day one and i was not going to die now i had to take the risk because obviously i knew if i was a watcher like you guys i'd also want to see what this biome looks like so here it is just to add on to everything that's wrong with this biome, some of the plants there, if you step on it, not only do you get slowness, but you also get blindness for a temporary amount of time. So even if the shadow people are chasing you, if you stumble, if you stumble upon one of these flowers that give you these two effects, oh good lord. In all honesty, I just ran. I didn't look behind, I didn't do anything, I just ran. Ran for my life. Past all of that darkness, we ended up in a bit of a purple biome with a bunch of chorus fruit. Which is good for us because, you know, we needed food. But besides that, we also found the one thing that I kind of wanted to find within the first few days of surviving. But obviously it looks kind of garbage, so I'm not even surprised at this point. Come on now. But you know, hey, halfway in, we find one of these. So if you guys don't know what these are, these are basically called end cities. Yes, even with this little modded end of ours, we still get our default Minecraft lovely end cities. For now, I'll be getting into that later. We're ready to challenge this place. I don't have a bunch of food besides chorus fruit, which is one of the most horrendous types of food you can get in the end. So keep that in mind. I swear I'm better than this. If I had normal food, I would have been able to tackle this end city easily. I go into the end city and I kill a bunch of shulkers, thinking that there were chests at the very top. Oh, was I mistaken. There was actually nothing 
at the top. It was very pointless. There were no chests. There were just shulkers. And in all honesty, it was a big waste of time. Now, this actually took up a huge chunk of time, mind you. I'm just kind of summarizing the clips as to what exactly happened. Not a lot. I honestly was expecting a lot better loot from this place while it gave me absolutely nothing and just deplenished my health and my food. We honestly kept our head up and started moving forward. I knew if this was over here, there couldn't have been another end city that far away, right? We were looking for the one with the ship because the one with the ship has some very OP loot within the ship, not to mention there's an elytra in there and an ender chest. All of stuff that we need. Day 61 to 70. We kept moving forward. There was a bunch of repeated biomes as usual. We just kind of kept going, you know, further and further. As we did, we got more and more blocks, more and more stuff, obviously, and killed a couple more things here and there. That basically summarizes the travel portion. We actually find another one of those mega lakes. Why is that mega lake important? That's because that's the last thing I saw right before we ended up at the very thing that we needed. A functioning end city with an end ship. Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on this build. This is honestly one of the best things that has ever happened to the end. If you guys thought that normal end cities were cool looking, this one just takes it to a whole nother level. As any person would, after discovering this amazing build and structure, I quickly scurried my way over there. Don't get me wrong now, it wasn't just the elytra and the ender chest we were after. There was a certain material that I was looking for. Sadly, I didn't see one within the structure itself, so I had to really hope that it stuck by one of the chests or something. I really do wish I found one of these a lot sooner because, to be honest with you guys, the preparation I had when going into this was probably going to be no different than what I would have without anything. But I do have to say the shield and the chest plate kind of did carry high key. So I'm, I'm going to give it to that. I'm going to give it to that as the reason to why I survived this long and this long of a duration. It honestly makes sense, doesn't it? So here was my plan. I was going to infiltrate the facility there by simply going in with the shield. Shielding all of the bullets that the shulkers have to offer me. And, you know, little, kind of like shimmy my way up to the top with the levitation that they were going to give me. That went horribly wrong. By the way, a little bit of a spoiler alert, you know. But, that went horribly wrong. I went in there, got bombarded, almost died, so I dipped outside and started scaling the structure from the outside. After managing to get myself on top of one of the towers, I then realized that there's a bunch of shulker boxes up there, and I decided to take the shulker boxes. Using the obviously very, very large brain of mine, I get levitation. I start floating above the end city, then I ender pearl my way over to the blimp. That's the end ship by the way, there's actually a revamped version of it and it has a lot more wool now, so that's why I kinda call it a blimp, cause it looked like one. I dug down and I wasn't really sure what I was looking at. I made a very fatal mistake. I took a lot of damage getting there, so when I ate that one piece of food, aka the chorus fruit, it teleported me right back down to ground one. Not to mention, there are spawners in there that spawn in phantoms to kill you as if just dealing with the shulkers wasn't bad enough now i gotta deal with phantoms as well on the bright side if i do end up continuing this series i will have a way to repair my elytra without having to ever leave the end so that's a bit of a plus i got back up i blocked myself in then when i tried getting out i got back down there because i need to eat food then i repeat the process one more time and i managed to get back up officially this time after i was ready I then revealed myself as to the location I was in. So the shulkers were ready with fire. There's no ceasefire there. They're just, they're, they're ready. They're ready with their bullets. They want to shoot me. They want to give me levitation and just ruin my day, really. I ran in there, zigzagged away from them. I took all of the chests with an iron axe that I crafted and also grabbed the elytra as fast as possible. When getting back to safety, I also then realized that my inventory was full. So some of the items that I collected from the chest weren't necessarily collected. That was bad. I cleaned out my inventory, ran back in there, collected that stuff, grabbed the ender chest, and got myself back to safety. Shortly after organizing my inventory and putting a bunch of my stuff into a shulker box, I jump off of the ship, as any sane individual would do in this position. I had an elytra, and I'm not sure why in my mind I didn't think of putting it on. I probably should have. It would have made things a lot more safer. But instead, I decided to YOLO jump and throw an Ender Pearl right before I actually land myself and deal that fall damage. Hey, I clutched it, okay? Don't hate on me. Day 71 to 80. The first half of this duration was actually not much of anything. I tried tracing back my steps, but for some portions of it, because I was just going biome to biome and there wasn't really much of an island gap, 
There wasn't really many markings for me to follow, so what I decided to do was just to go back to the coordinates that I know of, aka the base, and on the way there, we actually completely missed an end city. That's how far I had to travel just to find that end city, let alone get back to my base. So I had to make that entire trip back. This took ages, literally ages. What I ended up doing for these portions is using my elytra. I built up super high, then jumped off of it, used my elytra to gain some speed, and gain great distances within a short amount of time. Obviously, this wasn't the most efficient, especially when I hit the side of cliffs and stuff and trees. Not fun at all. Regardless of that, upon finding this other end city, I also do notice that there is a ship. That was kind of the thing I was going for. I didn't really need any more shulkers because I already had plenty. Not to mention, we were pretty sufficient on shulker cells as well. So I quickly ran my way up to the ship itself, grabbed a bunch of the stuff, got ourselves new elytra, and yeah, basically moved on with our day. This time in the end city was actually a lot better due to the simple fact that we had goaded armor. We were basically buff. I wasn't too worried about this time around, and not to mention we had the elytra. So even if we did get a crazy amount of levitation and we were millions of blocks into the air, we could have clutched it. Days 81 to 85. This was just about the time we got back. I was soaring through the air like an eagle. The one thing that I do wish I had was fireworks, but obviously there weren't many creepers over here. Not to mention, I don't think it would be worth much getting that kind of stuff. Especially not within this time crunch. Not only this, but I also had to kill the ender dragon. So those are two things that I had to get out of the way. For some reason, I felt the need to plant my chorus fruit tree. I don't know why. I mean, it's about time, right? But... It's kind of near the end of the thing, so it didn't really matter. Luckily for me, we did in fact plant the berries, so that was kind of a big carry. I started looking into the colors of the blocks. I started making all of the wood logs that we had into planks and comparing them. I wanted to see which two colors that I wanted to use. At the end of the day, I decided to use the colors green and pink. Green obviously being because it matches this biome, and pink just being a counterpart because I wasn't going to use something that looked very similar to birch, that's for sure. I created a whole staircase system up there, not to mention I started working on a little bit of the base. It was going to be somewhat of a one floor house with an attic. That's what I was going for because obviously I didn't want too big of a house because I didn't know what to put in it in general and I definitely wasn't going to spend ages just trying to work on interior design because that is not my strong suit. Throughout this build session, I didn't have enough of the stuff that I needed, aka the wood that's not only pink but also green. So I had to kind of make runs back to get more of these materials but at the end of the day, we did in fact build the basis of what we wanted. Days 86 to 90. Okay, and we are done with our build. Let me show you guys what we got so far. Listen, okay, keep a creative mind. Keep a creative mind when looking at this because I am not the best of builders. I am not a professional builder. I, I, I just play Minecraft. And bam, fancy staircase up to our lovely house. Going into the house, you know, we got a little bit of a storage facility there, a bit of a crafting table, a bit of a storage system. We're kind of goaded. We're kind of goaded if I do say so myself. I also decided to take some time to transfer all the items that were in the chest below up to here so just for conveniency's sake i looked into a bit of the stuff that we needed for some of these crystallite armor and like just pickaxes and armor sets in general i was missing one component and that was amber luckily for us amber isn't that rare and we already know exactly where the biome is that we required it from it's that really desolate looking orange biome we run over there grab as much amber as we possibly can I then started following the trail of just the biome in general in a different direction that I haven't already gone into in search of obviously more amber and some of these other ores that you know require certain crafting recipes and gather some of that as well. On the way there we find another one of those biomes that give us a bunch of crystal. Lo and behold we find another one of these things. Like why couldn't I find this in the beginning? Regardless I decided to speedrun it because obviously we weren't working with a lot of time and we still needed to kill the ender dragon. Not to mention create that crystallite set of armor, so that's what I was working on. We went up there, grabbed the elytra, grabbed the loot, and quickly dipped. Yeah, it was literally just an in and out situation. Just a heads up, this location is super close to our base, and that was a good thing. I started mining up some of the obsidian that's located near the bottom of the ship itself. There were two reasons for this action, the first being a little bit of a podium that we need for, you know, crystallite armor, and second, a nether portal. On the way back home, I find another one of those fuming biomes, and I found some gravel there. Quickly took that, got some flint, and ran back home. I had all the materials for another portal in case I do do a days 100 to 200. So that was just in preparation for that. I also wanted to go into the nether but realized I didn't have that much time to work with. Listen, okay, we tried the nether portal. It didn't work. This was a bust. We lost a bunch of time and wasted a bunch of resources. Instead, what we decided to do was use up any of the wool that we had remaining. 
from the end ships, mind you, the sails, yeah. We collected quite a few of that. We decided to make those into beds and head ourselves over to the dragon fight. I wanted to get that out of the way. Usually, I'd leave that up until the very end, but it was okay. We can make the crystallite armor later. It was definitely not because I didn't know the recipes and didn't do enough research, so I wanted to do it the next day because I was lazy. Definitely not that. Got it? Cool. Glad we're on the same page. Now you might be wondering, hey, you don't have any Eye of Enders. How are you supposed to find the Ender Dragon in the first place? While using my big brain, I realized that, you know, the dragon fight is usually around the coordinates of 0, 0. So what I decided to do was head over to his coordinates 0, 0. Luckily for us, that wasn't too far. It was almost around, I'd like to say, a good 400 blocks from us away from the original spawn point within the end itself. Not to mention, the space in between that position and 0, 0 wasn't even that dramatic. It was tops 500 blocks away. Okay, that might be an understatement, but listen up, okay? We made it. We made it. That's what matters. And this is where the fight begins. Days 91 to 95. As any Ender Dragon fight, my first goal is to take out the crystals. This was pretty simple because we had a large amount of blocks. Not really. I kind of wasted it all on the bridge. Hey. Okay, but I still had some blocks left to be fair. I got one crystal, two crystal, another crystal. We were closing into the Ender Dragon finally being done and eliminated from the world. And that is exactly where the bed bombing came in. God bless the end ships, because if I didn't have that, I wouldn't have been able to kill this Ender Dragon with the ease that I'm at right now. And it is gone. We killed him. That's it. We killed the Ender Dragon. And it was super early too. Obviously, we grabbed the egg. We didn't go into the portal because that would send us back to the overworld. That's just a no-no. So we decided to head back home. We decided to go take the very long bridge of ours and eventually get back to the place where it all began. The place I wanted to make the treehouse in the first place. Days 96 to 99. Hear me out, okay? I was being a bit of a moron. I had a ton of these end pedestals, but I didn't have enough. Instead of using them for what they're for, I wanted to kind of end off the series because, I don't know, for some reason my brain was just like, okay, we killed the ender dragon, we're done here, there's nothing else. So what I decided to do was collect some of the most valuable items that I've earned within the end so far and put them up on the podiums. I, why did I do this? Legit, for this duration of time, I was quite literally just walking around. I didn't know what else to do because I thought I have completed everything. So everything else was kind of just like extra. So I didn't really do much until I realized I'm like, wait a minute. I don't have the crystallite armor yet. What am I doing? I then realized the materials that I need and that I was actually lacking in a couple of departments. And by that, I mean in the end stone pedestals. We were missing a couple. So what I decided to do was I decided to go back to one of the nearest end cities and collect some more of those. If you guys don't know where those are from, those are basically from the little shulker places. When you mine the thing underneath it, it's basically one of the things that we need. So that's what I decided to grab more of. After going over there, I then decided to make my journey back. Now that I have everything that I require, I then started working on the little bit of the outline that I needed to actually craft this crystallite armor. Just a heads up, the version of the fabric mod that I downloaded actually doesn't have the animation for us making the crystallite armor. It was a little buggy and I honestly thought it was broken and that I needed to like get a different version of the mod. But at the end of the day, we still got the crystallite armor. Day 100. I'm going to keep it a buck with you here. I didn't have much else to do. I packed up all of the podiums, including the ender eye one, and I decided to take it back up to my roof. So once again, put it up on my roof and put in some of the most valuable items including my crystallite armor, the dragon head, my elytras. Y'all know the drill, y'all know the drill. In my opinion, it was a very nice way to show off my progress. That is where it all came into wraps. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks a bunch. If you like what you see here, make sure to destroy the like button. If we get up to 3000 likes on this video, I'll be sure to make a days 100 to 200. It'll just simply tell me you guys want more. And hey, if you made it this far, you've already made the dedication on sticking around for a while, so feel free to hit that subscribe button with the post notifications on. It don't hurt, and you can change your mind whenever. Oh, right, the technical bit. I, I know some of you guys actually wait around for this portion of the video. The list of mods that I used for this mod pack in specific is all listed below in the description if you are interested on doing this challenge yourself or just want to try out some of these mods for yourself. I do not own any of these mods, these are all mods made by their respective creators. And yeah, we did kind of tweak a little bit of the config. Anyways, catch you guys on the next video.